Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for yet another episode of the show. And now here at Culinaria, I'm actually here at the Grand Tasting. I'm here with Chef Jesse, Jason Dady, who's got quite a few concepts. Right. Uh, I've been to a few of them and they've been wonderful. Um, so let me go ahead and just introduce them and have you tell us a little bit about who you are and the concepts you've got with us. Well, I'm Jason Dady. I'm a chef here in San Antonio. I've been open for about 11 years now. We kind of have concepts all over the board from a wine bar concept, Texas barbecue, and then we have an awesome um, basically Italian restaurant that focuses on uh, northern northern Italy okay all right and I've, I've been to a few of them I've been to Ben I've been to Tre Trattoria uh, wonderful stuff there haven't made it to two brothers right. yet yep. but um, <laughs> but uh, wonderful stuff um, so you're here at Culinaria yes. and you've been here quite a few years right I've been here this is I think 11 years in a row so I mean really this is our showcase for San Antonio to showcase to Texas and across the nation that we have uh, extremely capable chefs and restaurateurs that are putting out world-class cuisine with wonderful wines and just kind of different environments with different type of concepts so it's a lot of fun. Awesome. So um, what, what did you bring today? What, did, what are you featuring today as far as your culinary, culinary stuff? Well, to, it wasn't anything necessarily for many of our restaurants. We like to have fun at these events and kind of push the envelope a little bit. So we're doing a liquid nitrogen uh, coconut milk, basically, that will be served with a pickled mango coulis and then a fresh Thai red curry that is really spicy. So the idea is to be really spicy and then let that coconut milk cool it off. So something that's going to push the palates a little bit. Awesome. What else do you have? Uh, yeah, I, I've got a couple of bottles of wine in the cooler, and I'm here to have a good time. That's the I like that. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, talk to me a little bit about um, what was your first concept? Our first concept actually was called the Lodge Restaurant of Castle Hills. It was a tasting menu restaurant, five and eight courses. We were open for ten and a half years and kind of decided that we wanted out of the tasting menu business and wanted to kind of focus on the, you know, more where the price point is with what the market's driving right now and that more casual type of environment where you can come in and, shorts and a t-shirt and still order an $80 bottle, dollar bottle of wine versus feeling like you have to dress up every time you come in. So uh, we've kind of at least changed our format a little bit, but it's going very well. We couldn't be happier with the decision. Awesome. Now, I've been to uh, Trey Trattoria. You've got a couple of those right. in town. We have Trey Trattoria uh, in Alamo Heights, which was the first one, and then we decided to open one downtown. I think it was very important for us to take our basically our concept as a whole or our our brand and, and be circular with downtown, which has enabled us to uh, basically showcase to people that are coming into San Antonio for conventions or events that, you know, we again, the world-class cuisine, and then that allows us to kind of shuttle them and say, hey, we have a great barbecue restaurant, and we've got a great wine bar, and kind of, it helped our whole, our whole brand as a whole. All right, and um, so let's talk about how you pair your wines at your different restaurants. What, what's your philosophy with the wine lists? Oh, that's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's all over the place. You know, at Bin 555, it's about um, variety and really new world versus old world and having a nice balance of both. But in that price point, that's really affordable. So really, we're trying to be in that 30 to $50 range for most of our bottles because I think that that's the price point that most of your consumers are looking to spend when they come in for a quick dinner with a couple of small plates. Uh, Trey Trattoria in Alamo Heights is 100% Italian wine list. So that, you know, is obviously very specific to the type of food we're serving. When, and really, when we did it, it was the first one in town that did it. And so it was able to push the envelope a little bit, push our envelope a little bit on what we needed to learn and educate ourselves on. And then downtown, just because specifically of the clientele, we have uh, a little bit of old world, but more of that California cab, okay. that Central California type of list, because that's what our clients there that, that, that are asking for. Our barbecue joint actually has a little bit of wine selections as well, but nothing major. We try to kind of keep it simple. And, uh, and then we have one section called the big dog. So, you know, if you come in and you want a big California cab and you want to spend the big dollars, you can come in, but you get it in a plastic cup. So it's always kind of a humorous thing. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, so you've been, you've been coming here for 11 years. Um, has there been any like extremely memorable moments of culinaria? Um, well, last year we decided that we would put all of our restaurants in one long line right next to each other. And we did a five course tasting menu. 
and uh, we got our butts whooped hard for a long, long night. Uh, but it was important that uh, we served every guest in line. So we had people waiting 45 minutes to get through the tasting menu line. It was a really aggressive concept, but it was a lot of fun, and it was something that people this year were like, are you doing that again? I was like, no way. No I, way. I remember that. Because I remember that long table. You had the Twitter right. you had the Twitter, Twitter thing on the everything. Twitter feed on the TV. Yeah. Um, you're, you're actually very active in social media. Right. Uh, so explain to me why you feel it's important to be active in social media. Uh, more than anything, it's a way to connect with your customers. And on a level that, you know, but prior to say Twitter, in particular Twitter, is that it gives people instant communication and in instant feedback, but it also gives them an insight to what we're doing. And in our business, people want to know where we're going to eat. Uh, they look at us to maybe having an advantage or knowing maybe some of the better places or where we prefer to dine. Uh, I love the ability to show people products that we're buying or where we, we buy it. Yesterday, I was at an Asian market that 99% of San Antonio is not aware of and took a picture of the storefront and said, get over here. This is a gr And without that outlet of, say, something like Twitter that's instant where they, where they get a beep on their phone. or I just I love that ability to, to have that one level of connection that wasn't there before. Great. Um, well, I know you're busy. Right. Uh, things are things. <laughs> things are getting. Things are actually getting really started. We're kind of the pre-event. We're here in the bubble room. Yeah, I can't complain. Um, the VIP room. Yeah, right. Um, we're in the right spot, by the way. <laughs> exactly. So um, I'm going to let you get back Great. to getting everything set up. Thank I really you. appreciate you spending a few minutes with Thank me. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate it. Take awesome. Care. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I've got John, Chef John Brand here. Uh, he's with Omni and. Uh, Really, Omni, right? right. Well, yes. Las Canarias and Las... Uh, Okay. So, uh, kind of tell us who you are and go over your concepts that you're that you're involved with. Well, I, I'm with uh, two properties downtown with with Omni that are two dynamic properties downtown the Riverwalk. Um, one is Las Canarias, a, a more stately, older a hotel, and a, the other one across the river is uh, Makara Hotel and Spa, which is more of a spa-based, um, spa-themed property. And our future restaurant in there is Ostra, more of a seafood-focused restaurant. Uh, heavily on the seafood focused restaurant. So um, I, re I represent both and so tonight we are here supporting Culinaria in the bubble room um, again supporting both restaurants so we're doing a couple of classic dishes that you'll find more on the uh, Las Canarias menu and then, and, then a, and then a signature seafood dish we can find on, uh, as a sampling as a, as a flavor of that we can find for this event. So. Okay, uh, why don't you describe uh, some of the dishes you've got going on well, here? We we featured a we try to feature a little bit of our craft work, so uh, a fair amount of char, char, uh, charcuterie. So we did our we do our own cider cured duck and and ham, make it a ham. We smoke it. We uh, we do a lamb neck terrine. Um, we do our own foie gras torchons. Oh, what else we got? We got some some prosciutto uh, wrapped with some stonewall peaches. There's a there's a duck mousse over there. There's a chicken liver uh, uh, chicken liver pate, a rabbit riette from Fredericksburg, and a um, smoked salmon riette as well. So a little bit of a little charcuterie and all the te cheeses we brought in from Texas as well. Most of them are from the Waco area, the Brazos Valley area. Um, uh, so we're doing some cheese, some charcuterie. We're searing off a little foie gras, and I also have a. A, a caviar tasting where I brought in three different types of actually four types of caviar a trout caviar but we did three different types of sturgeon caviar a, a wild sturgeon um, uh, wild sturgeon a white sturgeon and then just a regular hackleback which is also a, a version of caviar all American caviar is um, from California I think are great so that's a lot of stuff <laughs> well, we know we're working I got a team here so we know we're making some uh, some blinis to go with it uh, so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I came in here uh, to uh, to get things started, and he he was already slammed by the time I got everything set up. So, um, how, how how many years have you been involved with culinaria? Uh, four years now. So this is probably my fifth grand tasting that we've done for them. Fourth or fifth grand tasting that we've done for culinaria. So I'm glad, glad to be part of it, and glad uh, I finally got into the the VIP room. So exactly, it's nice to be in the VIP room, isn't yes, it? Yes. 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 Um, so, uh, with uh, with the, the concepts that you that you involved with, how do you work the wine list, and how do you pair how do you pair everything up? Uh, we try not to keep it homogenous. We have you know two properties, and but they're two different wine cellars and two different uh, two different programs. And and fortunately enough, fortunately we we sell equal amount of wine sales at both properties, even though Ostra is kind of geared towards a. 
Uh, to, has it more about? We have 75 tequilas on the bar, the largest in the, on the Riverwalk. So we're, we're heavy in the spirits, but our largest sales, um, at least like this last month, were uh, wines with a glass. So we do have a very strong uh, wine program as well as a cocktail program and, and spirits. So uh, to, to write the, the, the menu, I have great support in my uh, food and beverage director, uh, Chris Walling, who helps balance the two wines that uh, the wine lists aren't homogenous and uh, they do kind of match up with the menu a bit. So it's teamwork. Great. Um, do you change it uh, when you change the menu, or do you have, or does um, the wine list change? It, it evolves. It just keeps evolving. It uh, the, the the menu evolves. The menu changes. We, we we flex with markets. We flex with availability. We flex with the seasons um, on, on both menus. So I, I don't I don't have a set program to change a menu. I change a menu when, um, to what I can get and how I can get it and the time of year and the season and what and what the customers buy. My my clientele as a changes all, all the time so I, I can't just keep doing the same thing I want to I want to stay progressive as well as the, the kitchen and I want the guests to stay progressive as well right and um, so you're you're in the downtown area so mm -hmm. you've got a lot of conventions that come through do yep. some conventions dictate maybe what type yep. of menu yeah they do they do they do and uh, uh, you can always tell by looking at the river uh, what kind of you keep track of what's going on at the convention center and, and what's going on in town but that does determine the demographic of uh, what kind of meat goes on the menu this weekend or it's going on next week uh, or what uh, protein or dish is going to come off because it, it, I'd rather make the food to, to sell the food to get people to enjoy the food than just to have my ego write the menu and just put it on there because I think you should have it. Um, so we are, we are sensitive to our, our clientele, to the dynamic, to, to the price structure um, as, well as, our, as well as the products we get and how that's um, worded on a menu, you know, sometimes it, it can be a little bit more, have a little bit more flair and verbiage, and sometimes it can have less, and it still be the same product. Right. Um, so you've done the culinary for a few years. Uh, is there any particular year that st has stood out for you? Last year. Last year we did a lot of the events. We did uh, uh, wine dinners, uh, wine dinner on a Thursday night. Friday we did a lunch at the Becker Vineyard, which was fantastic. Um, Friday night, um, that's I, best in Mexico. That's usually one that I buy a ticket to go to, uh, and, and I go and enjoy it. Uh, and Saturday is a grand tasting, which last year was big. Um, and uh, then the burger event on Sunday, which is the one that everyone really looks forward to. So this year, you know, my proudest moment I think was last night because. Uh, I was able to feature seven of our J1 culinary students that, that work in, in uh, both restaurants at the Best of Mexico, and they prepared their food, and we just uh, advised them and consulted them, but we try to support Mexico and their education and uh, the future, of, 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 I guess, of, of Mexico. And, the, and these seven students um, who work in both restaurants did great. They knocked out a part. They each did dishes that they all worked together. They came up as a team together. They, they, all, they all laid it out. And, we just help manage the process, so that was that was a good thing. Are they uh, are they students of the CIA or no no they're okay. that they have schools in Mexico they go to and then they work up here in Ibiza and, and at some point they'll go back but it was good to have them. Oh that's that's really awesome. Um, yeah, last year I was here, huge event yeah. and uh, and I, and I keep, people keep telling me to go to the burger event tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and you should. You know, last year I hadn't done the burger event before and I. And I I heard it was a competition, and I'm not really keen on competitions. I just don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think food's about a competition. So, um, but we did it, and uh, we had a blast. We had so much fun, and I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow as well. So it was very good. Very good. Well, I, I absolutely appreciate you spending some time. Uh, I know you're busy. Uh, I'll let you get back to uh, making some wonderful food over here. Um, definitely gonna try some of it. Hopefully, you get uh, some of it. oh yeah, definitely gonna make sure I get get to some of this. And um, I really appreciate you uh, spending a few moments with no, me. No, no problem, no problem, pleasure. Thanks for your time. All right, thank Great. you very much. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for uh, this segment. I do hope to get some uh, some winery people uh, on camera. We'll see how that works out, and because uh, the, the the main event's actually getting started, so they're all gonna be busy at their tables. Um, but I just want to thank everyone for stopping by, and we'll see everyone again next time. Hello, everybody. I have uh, Enrique Toso here. Uh, he's from Argentina. Uh, he's here at the Grand Tasting with with some wines. Um, was able to uh, get him to come by for a few minutes, and we're going to talk about uh, who, who he is, his winery, and, and the wines he's got here at uh, the Culinaria here in San Antonio. So, Enrique, let, give us a little background of who you are and your family and and, uh, and the winery down in Argentina. Okay, Pascual Toso is the name of my grand-grandfather. The family are in the business for four generations. 
uh, here from Italy and transported Mendoza all of the original culture in the wine business. The, in 2001, I contacted Paul Hobbs and put a uh, Paul Hobbs, you know Paul Hobbs, the winemaker? Yes. In the role of, put a Paul in the role of the consulting winemaker since 2001 here in this uh, collaboration point. And the winery have uh, around 900 acres of land in Barrancas, in Maipú, Mendoza, Argentina. Where is that? Uh, Barranca is, is in the south coast of the Mendoza River. Like in the coast of the river, it's in the near to the mountains, receive all of the uh, fresh air of the mountain, have alluvial soil, poor, stony, uh, mineral, very, very poor soil. Ideal for making high quality uh, uh, great from wines. In our philosophy, you define the quality of the wines in the vineyard's work, uh, and whether you have one excellent winery and one excellent winemaker, you transport this potentiality, the quality at the bottom. Uh, the rest is easy when you have the right land, soil, you have the right weather, and the right people in the team, mm -hmm. like uh, Paul Hobbs in the role of the consulting winemaker, or Rolando Lupino is the, the first winemaker of the winery, and produce wonderful wines. One of the, our bigger success in the United States is our Malbec, State Malbec. Okay. This is a, in 08, received a mention in one portal magazine of the United States of the best, uh, the best uh, wine of the year in the category of the under $15. Okay. And have been successful otherwise, and uh, have five different level price uh, and between $10 at $100 the bottle. Um, this is a Pascual Tosso division. Have other division is a sparkling wine division. Okay. The sparkling wine division are founded from my grandfather, Jose Tosso. He studied enology in the Alba School. You know, the Alba is special, school is specialized in, in Burbuls. And today, the Sparking Wine Division is probably the, the bigger division in the company. Produce a lot and have a big success with our Tosso Sparking Brut. It's, it's fantastic. So uh, what uh, what grapes are you using in your sparkling wine? Chardonnay, 100%. And in the steel wine with Pascual Tosso, in the white have three whites. Torrontes is typical of Argentina. Right. Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. And in the red have a Malbec, Cabernet, Syrah. This is the first white uh, grapes, no? All right. And uh, so you said the, for the sparkling wine, it's been really growing quite a bit. Is that right? Yeah, it's selling very well here, very well in Japan, in Scandinavian countries. Uh, many places have a big success from the... Uh, it's a, the Argentinian phenomenon. For a long time, the Argentinian uh, love, including today, the sparkling. Okay. Or from the 60 years, the Argentina have uh, the Argentina have uh, the the, clo the economic are closed and don't have big interrelation with the war. And at this time, the Argentinians produce envelopment different tastes in bourbons. They like uh, the fruity, they like the yeast, they like don't like the high acidity and they like uh, very, uh, the dry, uh, the condition of root, the dry wines, mm -hmm. and make it with fruity wine, have a wonderful smile at uh, apple, like a Chardonnay, uh, and excellent taste, complexity with the uh, collaboration of the yeast taste. Uh, the rest, uh, in, in, in funny comment, I say, 
But if you have the right tools, it's, the rest is easy. It's just work. Okay. <laughs> right, right. So um, now I think you said you have one of the Malbecs here tonight. Uh, what, what what wines are you, are, are you featuring here tonight? Tonight you have the, the Brut. Okay. The Torrontes, the State uh, Malbec, the State Cabernet Sauvignon, and the Reserva Malbec. Sounds good to me. <laughs> now, I need you to taste it. And, and, and I, I cannot wait to go taste some of this stuff. Uh, I really appreciate you spending a few minutes with me uh, to kind of highlight your, your wines. Uh, I look forward to tasting some of those and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. And Thank I'll see you. you later in the table. Right? Absolutely. Thank you. Hello everybody, I've got, uh, I've got Gary Hogue here from Hogue Cellars, um, and uh, I'm really, really, really happy he's talking with me, especially because uh, last year I spilt a little wine on him, and uh, so hopefully, uh, we're, we're, well that definitely won't happen because there's no wine near us, but uh, I'm really pleased that you're coming over here to talk with us for a little bit. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you and about the winery, and uh, we'll talk about some other stuff. Good. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I'm happy to be here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I'm a long way from home. Uh, my home is in Washington State in the Yakima Valley. And a little bit about us, we, this is our 30th anniversary awesome. this year. So 30 years ago we started our winery uh, with a measly 2,000 cases of wine. And then one thing led to another and holy cow it took off. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Nice. Oh. So I've um, uh, been doing this for 30 years. So um, what, uh, what have you got? Uh, what did you bring over here to San Antonio to showcase uh, for your winery today? Well, we have three labels. We have our red label, okay, and we have our Genesis label, and we have our reserve, and we have uh, some of each of those here tonight. So, a different price point, different flavor profile, different packaging. Okay. Um, now, I know uh, we had talked about Genesis last year, so kind of tell me a little backstory about the Genesis label. Well, uh, when we first started the winery, of course, we started with our what was currently today our red label, and we found out pretty quickly that there are many different microclimates, and many different sites, many different grape flavor profiles, and on and on and on. And so we thought, well, this is this is what are we going to do? <laughs> so we created another label called Genesis, and that's named after our very first vineyard, um, our first Riesling vineyard, uh, six acres that we planted in 19. 79 and Genesis meaning in the beginning so that's mm -hmm. what it was in the honor of that of that vineyard okay um, what range of wines do you have on each of your labels what like, like 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 type of uh, great varietals yeah well interestingly enough Washington State produces most varietals in quantities that we're familiar with with the exception of Zinfandel and Pinot Noir so Washington State is a big Riesling producer Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Gewürztraminer. Uh, in our red label, we have Cabernet, Merlot, Syrah, and also another Riesling, and an oak Chardonnay also. Okay. And in our reserve, we only produce 2,000 cases a year of each Cabernet and Merlot. And so there you go. Cool. Um, now, I know uh, uh, last year I tasted some of those wines. I definitely uh, anticipated tasting some of those again today. Um, how many how many years have you been coming over to Culinaria? Uh, oh my goodness, I don't remember for sure, <laughs> but it's been a number of years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So great event. So, do you find that this is a uh, uh, an event that's uh, well? Obviously, you've been coming here for a, a lot a long time. Right. So you you feel that this is a really good event for for you as a winemaker to be here? Well, uh, if nobody buys our wines. <laughs> Uh, then we don't. We're no. We're not a winery. In order to uh, have them try our wines, they must have trial. So this is a good uh, thing to come to, and to have trial and uh, introduce consumers to our wines if they haven't had them before. Okay, and uh, one of the things I appreciate that you're here um, is that you you represent the company because um, you know there are there are there, we got a lot of tables there, but not everybody has an actual represent representative right. of of the winery. So. I really think that's it's wonderful that you chose to come here. And, and Not many of us left, okay? <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's wonderful, and they have, 
you know, this event has a lot of great people and they've got a lot of great people pouring the wines, um, but it has, a, I think it has a nice little bit of extra touch that you've got somebody from the winery here. Right. Cool. Well, it's great to be here. So. Awesome. Well, uh, I really appreciate you, you coming over here and uh, spending a few minutes with me. I'll let you get back to your table and I'll, I'll be seeing you in a few minutes tasting some great wine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very much.